So the way ML used to work is that people would just tinker with, with stuff and try to and try to get interesting results. That's what's been going on in the past. Then the scaling insight arrived, right? Scaling laws, GPT-3. And suddenly everyone realized we should scale. And it's just this, this is an example of how language affects thought. Scaling is what just one word but it's such a powerful word because it informs people what to do. They say, okay, let's, let's try to scale things. And so you say, okay, so what are we scaling? And pre-training was a thing to scale. It yeah. was a particular scaling recipe. Yes. The big breakthrough of pre-training is the realization that this recipe is good. So you say, hey, if you mix some compute with some data into a neural net of a certain size, you will get results. And you will know that it will be better if you just scale the recipe up. And this is also great. Companies love this because it gives you a very uh, low risk way of investing yeah. your resources, yeah. right? It's much harder to invest your resources in research. Compare that. You know, if you research, you need to have like go forth researchers and research and come up with something versus get more data, get more compute, you know, you'll get something from pre-training. And indeed, you know, it looks like I, based on various um, um, things people say on, some people say on Twitter, maybe it appears that Gemini have found a way to get more out of pre-training. At some point though, pre-training will run out of data. The data is very clearly finite. And so then, okay, what do you do next? Either you do some kind of a souped up pre-training, different recipe from the one you've done before, or you're doing RL, or maybe something else. But now that compute is big, Computer is now very big. In some sense, we are back to the age of research. So maybe here's another way to put it. Up until 2020, from, 2015, from 2012 to 2020, it was the age of research. Now, from 2020 to 2025, it was the age of scaling, or maybe plus minus, let's add error bars to those years, because people say, this is amazing, you gotta scale more, keep scaling, the one word, scaling. But now the scale is so big, like, is, is, it, is the belief really that, oh, it's so big, but if you had 100x more, everything would be so different. Like it would be different for sure. But like, is the belief that if you just 100x the scale, everything would be transformed? I don't think that's true. So it's back to the age of research again, just with big computers. That's a very interesting way to put it. But let me ask you the question you just posed then. What, what are we scaling and what, what, is, what would it mean to have a recipe because I guess I'm not aware of a very clean relationship that almost looks like a law of physics, which existed in pre-training. There was a power law between data or computer parameters and loss. What is the kind of relationship we should be seeking and how, how, how should we think about what this new recipe might look like? So we've, we've already witnessed a transition from one type of scaling to a different type of scaling from pre-training to rl now people are scaling rl now based on what people say on twitter they spend more compute on rl than on pre-training at this point because rl can actually consume quite a bit of compute yeah. you know you do very very long rollouts yes so it takes a lot of compute to produce those rollouts and then you get relatively small amount of learning pull rollout so right. you really can spend you really can spend a lot of compute and I could imagine, like I wouldn't at, at this at this stage. It's it's more like I wouldn't even call it a scale um, scaling. I would say, hey, like what are you doing, <laughs> and is the thing you are doing the 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 most productive thing you could be doing? Yeah. Can you find a most more productive way of using your compute? We've discussed the value function business earlier, and maybe once people get good at value functions they will be using their, their um, resources more productively. And if you find a whole other way of training models, you could say, is this scaling or is it just using your resources? I think it becomes a little bit ambiguous in a sense that when people were in the age of research, back then it was like people say, hey, let's try this and this and this, let's try that and that and that. Oh, look, something interesting is happening. And I think there will be a return to that. 
If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks.